good afternoon. I want to be showing you how to create this cool 3D logo today in Illustrator. It's got a Looney Tunes vibe to it, but it was just a simple initials, Jeremy Mirror. So you can see I did it in like a 3D style and perspective with some cool shadows. And I'm going to show you how to do this right now in Adobe Illustrator. So let's get stuck into it. First up, you can create an artboard or you can just, you know, turn artboards off so you can just have it all white, which is Control Shift H, which is a shortcut I use. And what I'm going to do is just press T for the type tool and left click and I'm just going to scale this font up using the shortcuts. I'm just going to type JM and I'm going to pick a font. Um, I like American Auto, it's nice and bold and thick. You can use like Bevis New or any thick font like Impact or things like that. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to bring this over here and I'm going to duplicate it and just have a copy over here in case we need it. What I'm going to do now is select this, go object and you can go expand. This will expand this into shapes. So, you know, just in case it lags and stuff like that, when it works with shapes, it's just easier. Sometimes it doesn't process live type. So that's how we expand it. Then I'm gonna go to the top left and click on effect. Click 3D, which is an illustrator effect. And we're gonna click extrude and bevel. So I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna click preview. So you can see what it's actually doing now is actually putting it on a perspective. So whatever position we put it on, like front, left, back, it's going to change the position of the of what's happening to the shape. A cool way to make sure that you can see it is actually just change the color. So maybe put it on a gray and I'll redo the effect so we can see the shadow properly. So you can see now if you do black, you can't see it properly, but now you see the shadows. So what I like to do, I pretty much like to do an off axis front and I like to play with these per parameter bars here. So I typically don't rate it too much. And I just use my mouse tool and rotate it so you can get the angle that you want. So you can see there. So I kind of like that angle, not too front on, but just like a little bit to the side. And you can make it rotate it as well, which is pretty cool. I want to extrude it more so the back end goes further out. So I'll play with the depth bar here. You don't want to go too high because it starts to lose its legibility. So, you know, we can do around 200 maybe or even like 150. Depends how 3D you want to make it look. We can play with the bevel section. So you can go in classic. You can go rounded. And some of these ones look bad. Some of them look good. But... I tend to leave on rounded or none or even classic is all right. If you play with this height bar, you can see I can change the actual height of the top part of the shape. So you can see there, it creates like this bevel effect. But obviously you don't want to do it too much because it starts to look ugly and you can't really tell the shape. So we only do it like a little bit. Seven points is good. So you can see we've got it there. We can also change the surface shading to diffuse shading, which is fine. I can move around this light as well. So you can see wherever you put the light, that's where the shadows are going to move. So if my light is on this side, I want the front of my letter forms or my font or my typeface, whatever you choose. So I want the light to be hitting that. Not, I don't want it to be hitting the back, right? Unless you're going for a certain look or, or you're creating an illustration or something. So I'll bring the light down here like that so it's hitting the main parts you can change the intensity and stuff and play around with the other stuff but I tend to leave it out so I'll press OK because I'm done now so now you can see I got these cool words happening so from here I'm going to expand it out so I'll go to object expand appearance so this should expand the effect that was applied and now I can actually go in and see the individual shapes so if I go to my outline mode by pressing Control Y you can see all the shapes now so if I go click, I see I got this shape, I got this one here, the front part as well, got these parts down here, and so forth. So you can tell that's what it did. I'm just gonna duplicate this so we don't mess around with it. And what I'm gonna do is I can actually start to color some of these shapes now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use my orange color for now that I have. And I'm gonna select the bevel parts and make it a different color to the front. So I'll make it a little bit darker. So it gives the illusion of that 3D effect because things in the background are going to be more dark because they're uh, um, further away from the light source. So I'll make these back ones even darker. So I'll try and get a color where you get multiple shades. 
a cool trick as well is if I select a color from my swatch and go to color guide, as you can see here, if you click this little drop down menu, what you can do is go down to shades, as you can see here, and it gives you all these shades. And what you can do, you press this little button here and it will plus it to your actual swatches panel. So now in my swatches panel, I've got all these four things up here and I can use the different shades there. So that's just a quick tip so you can create that for yourself. So sweet. So now I'm just going to quickly do this and I'm just going to go color all the parts that I want. I'm holding shift, selecting all those parts I want to select and coloring it with the right color. Cool, now we we've colored and we've added that main part. So I'm gonna duplicate this now and I can start to add a couple of effects to make it look good. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna drag a box rectangle and I'm gonna pick a color. So I'm gonna pick this blue color for now. I'll get that other blue color that I made before, something like that. I'm just gonna add that into my swatches panel. I'm just gonna drag this over here. And I can start to add a bit of effects, but pretty much you've, once you've at this point, you pretty much made a, a 3D looking um, type mark or word mark. And yeah, it, it looks good when it's with fonts. You can also do it with shapes as well, um, which I can show you in another video. But what I'm gonna do now is start to add some effects. So what I like to do is add, to add like a glow effect on the shapes here. So I'm gonna use the direct selection tool, pressing A, select the two front faces and hold shift to select both, as you can see. Press Control C, Control V to paste the copy and paste it. Now I've got these two shapes. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make it a compound path. So I'll go to Object, Compound Path, Make. So now I have this whole compound path. I'll change the color just so we can tell the difference. What I'm going to do, I'm going to press L for the Ellipse tool, holding Alt and Shift, drag at our circle. And I'm going to click on the gradient here. And what you want, you want a gradient of a lighter, like yellowy color, whatever the color is here, you want a lighter version of it. And on the other side, what you want is a color, it doesn't matter, it's similar to the yellow, it's fine. And you wanna make it 0% opacity. So you can see here, I got two sides and one side has zero opacity, one side is 100, like that. Now what I'm gonna do is drag it and I'm gonna make sure this is above the glow that I have. So what I'll do is I'll select this and go object, arrange, and make sure you bring it to the front. So it's the first option there in the little menu there. Now, what I'm gonna do, I wanna make sure that this is a compound path. So it should say compound path on the top left corner, as you can see next to the Illustrator logo there. Then what I can do, I can select both of these. I can go object, clipping mask and make a clipping mask. Now what it's done is put the gradient on that glow effect into the shape here, as you can see, because we only want it within these letters. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drag it using my smart guides and snap it directly on there. So now what I can do is I can actually press A for the direct selection tool. And if I click inside of that the shape that I just made, it will actually select the glow effect within the clipping mask. And what I can do is I can move it around like this, which is super cool. So you can place it around, you can get a cool illusion effect, make it look more 3D and dimensional, and just makes it pop more, makes it look nice. So that's kind of cool. What I can also do as well is I, if I lock this, once again, I'll select these and I'll Control C, Control V to do another version. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make a gradient stroke glow. So I'm gonna select this glow effect that I have here and I'm gonna press Shift X. Now I have it on my stroke panel. I'm gonna click the first type of gradient, which is a linear gradient. I'm gonna zoom in a bit. I'll make it three points. And what I can do is make this, go bring this down a bit, change the angle to 90 degrees and click this little button here to make sure it's on the top hand side. So from this point, I can drag these two, make sure they're grouped. So I'll select them, press Control G, 
drag these right on top again, go to my transparency panel, and we're gonna click color dodge. Boom, now we're getting some like cool highlight effect, which is so nice. And what I can actually do to make it look a bit better is go to my stroke panel, and you can see how the stroke is on the outside. What we want to do is bring it on the inside. So you can click the middle one, typically works best. So I'm gonna drag this in so it's directly on board. So now we have this highlight and this cool gradient in the middle. So if I get rid of these, you'll see the difference. It looks a bit flat. So now when we add that, it makes it look even more 3D and the light's hitting it, which is super cool. What I can then also do now is actually create a nice shadow effect. So I can go to my appearance panel, go to the FX button, click stylize and click drop shadow. From here, I can click on the color swatch. I can click a color that is similar to this one we have here. I'll make it a dark one, press OK. Click preview and you can see the shadow behind it there. So you can change the blur as well if you want more blur or less blur. You can drop the percentage as well. So around 60% is good and press OK. So now you can see with the drop shadow and without the drop shadow, the difference that it makes there, which is super nice. What we can then do now is I can actually add some circles. So what I did for this, I added a circle, press shift X to make it a stroke. And so you can see I have a stroke, just a circle, basic circle. I'll change the transparency blend mode to multiply and change the color to the blue color. I'll make this really big on the stroke size, so it's like 120 points. I'll scale it down like this. I'll also expand it as well, so go to edit, sorry, go to object, expand, press OK. Press Control and the left square bracket on the keyboard. I'll drop the opacity a little bit as well because it's a bit harsh. And I'll press Control C, Control F to paste in front, then I'll scale it up. So it starts to go on the outside and I can change the multiply percentage to the opacity here like that. And then I can make a clipping mask so it like keeps that blue thing there. Which is super cool. So yeah, it's looking awesome. We can add some more shadows as well. And by doing that, what I can do is I can pretty much copy the main shape, so I can copy this. Then what I can do, I can go to my Pathfinder, click on the first button, which is Unite. I can make it, press my eyedropper, select the background, go on my transparency and change the blending mode to multiply. And what I can do is bring it to the back, and make sure it's just above those things. And you can see I can add a shadow like this, and just what I'm doing is just using the arrow keys and bring it down like that. And a cool trick now is what I can do, I can duplicate this. Like that. And I can select these two. Go to object, blend. And we're about to make a blend. So go, you click make. And what we can do, you can go to object, go back to blend and click blend options. Press preview, go down to specified steps and just pump up the steps by like 100, which is sweet. And then now you can see you get this like long shadow effect. You can see you get these little lines, just ignore that. It's just the Adobe Illustrator and the graphics card that's doing that. But when you save it out, it should not happen. So I'm just saving for web and I can put it as a JPEG. And you can see it's loading a bit. And you can see now, you see in the JPEG, you can't really see the lines, which is cool. So yeah, and that's how we do it. That's how you create a 3D type. You can do it on a monogram, your own name. Um, you can do it for you know typography and fonts as well. Just make sure that you don't sacrifice the legibility. But um, yeah, once you save that out, then you're done and you're sweet. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to subscribe and also leave a comment and a like because it helps the videos, you know, get seen on YouTube and helps the channel grow. So thanks so much for watching. Appreciate your time. Have an awesome day.